All right, Mike here at Sky Include. I hope nobody's coming to get me, you know. <laughs> you know, I sound like a tinfoil hat today. Maybe some of you think I'm crazy, but today we're talking about a little bit of tinfoil hat things. But, you know, I mean, what is decentralization? It's something I'm diving down this rabbit hole of Web3. And, you know, there's this whole, some people feel like, you know, there should be censorship and there should be like governments that can censor things on blockchains. Um, I'll just say I don't I don't agree with that. So maybe some of you don't agree with me and they think governments should be able to revise blockchains uh, and transactions and I don't. OK, <clears throat> so we're going to talk about OFAC today. I'm learning about this. Never heard of this before. Um, and then we're going to kind of give you some food for thought. And I know we're all invested in our various blockchains and projects and us versus them. And obviously I have my maybe emotions and biases and investments, but I'm trying to just, you know, be a teacher here and a, a learner together. So let's talk about Ethereum and OFAC. So first, who is the biggest owners of Ethereum? You can go right on Etherscan and, uh, and slash accounts at Etherscan and see. These are the top uh, lists, and it seems like it goes all the way to uh, 10,000. So I, I'm not going to say I did I dug through all of these and it gives you some name tags to give you ideas of who these people are. Um, if they know, so like this one is got 450,000 and uh, there's no idea who this address is. Um, you know, something like uh, Bitcoiners don't like this, you know, just being able to look at an address and see the, all the assets and transactions. But Ethereum uh, is doing that. It's just a key difference of uh, ways. Okay, so back to the document. Sorry, I'm doing a lot of videos these days, so lots of tabs. Um, so, like, looking at different articles, you know, I just went to DuckDuckGo. I don't use Google too much, you know, I just go DuckDuckGo, and I say, who's largest owners of Ethereum? And I'm just reading, kind of researching this myself. Etherscan is, of course, source two. Capital.com says... Um, there, you know, it goes through different addresses. This is as of July 28, 2022. Uh, I linked all these in the article, but, um, you know, some are not, um, some are not identified, some are identified, some are, of course, centralized exchanges like Croc and Binance. Uh, you know, some are these wrapped wallets. And uh, Vitalik says he's never had more than 1%. Um, he's always had never more than never more than a percent and uh you know i respect this guy you know uh we can all have our opinions about different people but he's i think he's made an amazing contribution to the world um i just think maybe he's gotten so big that uh governments are getting involved and we'll talk about that today so you can read this uh there's market realist this is also february 2022 and uh, i put some quotes in my uh, document, this will be at skyinclude.com slash OFAC or OFAC. I'm going to call it OFAC. And uh, the large, you know, basically, you know, you can read this yourself. And uh, so one thing I highlighted from all this research is the 100 holders, top 100, control 40% of the uh, of the crypto, of, of Ethereum's existing supply, 40%. Not 51%, but um, close to it. And then there's another cool article. Use the Bitcoin.com. Maybe they're not. Usually Bitcoiners and Ethereum people don't don't like each other. Maybe it's, you know, you can just see who's some of these other famous holders. The Winklevoss brothers. Um, this NFL player, Joseph Lubin. Which is uh, really, some people said he saved Ethereum. Um, you know, I'm not going to go through the whole history of Ethereum. I'm not even qualified to do that. I have Ethereum. I have NFTs on Ethereum. I have domains on Ethereum. I'm not trying to hate on it. I mean, uh, I'm just trying to bring this to all of our attention. So that's just some points, right? Who Who is the owners? Because the owners, the majority owners, are the ones usually that uh, influence the blockchains. So let's go back to my doc or blog. It'll be a blog soon. So in September 2022, there was this big merge to um, from proof of work to proof of stake. And honestly, I wasn't studying it so closely. Uh, I'm only learning this now because I'm seeing tweets about OFAC. So we'll get into there. But um, 
you know, I think also this led to OFAC, all right? So some people felt like it was good. You know, I even thought of it because I always think well, mining, I think of computers, I think of processing, I think of bad for the environment. That's kind of what I've read. And I'm, I'm, I'm actually not convinced that that, I know it sounds like a horrible thing. Like, of course, I love our environment, but I believe um, freedom and I believe some of the other industries that it's disrupting will save a lot of carbon footprint, you know, from traditional banks. I worked on Wall Street, you know, I think that's a lot of money uh, or energy consumption to do all of that. And uh, there's been some huge debate on Twitter. This I don't even follow these influencers, but this bit boy went nuts on this Ryan Sean Adams. And uh, how do I say? I, I don't want to get personal, but I saw this random tweet from this person. He is right. Because I mean, basically this guy is saying that the suits are taking over uh crypto meaning the the rich and the finance people where he's saying maybe bitcoiners don't believe we're kind of against wall street and against this uh this system and now the system is moving on to blockchains and cryptos and kind of regulating it um and i, I this one kind of i want to highlight it's just a random one i saw on all these tweets he is right meaning bitboy bitboy um Humbling and bowing to the legislators to give your corrupt and censored chain, he's talking about Ethereum, a chance to survive and keep the number one spot. You and ETH as a whole are now an utter disgrace to the industry. So, okay, now what am I all, what's all this I'm talking about? <clears throat> Again, I linked to these tweets. So, OFAC compliance. It seems like it happened once the merge happened and it's on proof of stake, but um, validators. And I'm trying to be at my best to have research here. 51% of Ethereum validators are OFAC compliant. Ethereum pretty much under control of the U.S. government. And, you know, you can read these uh, implemented organizational controls to prevent the transfer of assets to countries, groups, or individuals sanctioned by the U.S. government. All right. I'm going to go a little bit more professional and deeper. And again, I'm trying to be really good about these videos lately as best I can. So what is OFAC? Office of Foreign Assets Control. It's under the U.S. Department of the Treasury. Again, I don't want to read, but I'm sounding like I'm reading. But you can link here, and I link to this source, okay? It's the treasury.gov. So what does that mean? It means the U.S. government body has 51% power over the validation of future blocks on Ethereum. Okay. It's a quote from the DowJones.com website. Okay. Or not, I'm not, I'm kind of connecting it to Ethereum, but they're just saying, what does it do? And then I'm saying, based on them having 51% of the validators of proof of stake, means they can censor blocks. All right. So I quote that. And then I have a couple other quotes you can read about OFAC and Investopedia or this other one. Um, so basically it means censorship, in my opinion, by, uh, by a U.S. government um, group under the Department of Treasury. So think about this a little bit, you know, and I know you're like, you maybe have millions of dollars in Ethereum or you're fully invested in ENS domains and you're just going to blind, your, you're just going to cover your eyes and or you can plug in your ears and cl cancel this video and say, no, no, Mike, you're just, gonna, oh, you're just trying to pump your own bags. You're just, you know, blah, blah, blah. I'm just saying, you know, I, I'm an American, you know, I hope nobody's like knocking on my door. I hope I'm not doing anything wrong. I hope nothing, uh, but isn't crypto supposed to be its own kind of thing and it's supposed to be uh, censorship resistant? Um, so let's just keep thinking about this. Again, I structured this in the show notes, skyinclude.com slash OFAC. So I know you're invested. I know, uh, uh, you know, I've been emotional, defensive, maybe aggressive, various, especially on Twitter. It's, it is, it is, uh, it makes that happen to a lot of us. Um, but I'm, I'm, I don't know. I just feel like lately is learning about light clients with proof of work where it's not no light clients are on Ethereum right now. And it's massive because nobody's interested in that. Um, you know, we talked to Decentral Web or he got some responses. Oh, it's in, there's a lot in our pipeline, but that doesn't, it just doesn't mean they're going to make it. It's just like kind of like, oh, well, you know, we got a lot of things to do. Um, I don't see the seriousness of light clients in any Ethereum projects. 
um, which means they're reliant on APIs, not reliant on OFAC compliant validators for future blocks. And these guys are all picking on Handshake, you know, uh, all of them. <laughs> we'll talk about that more. But yeah, proof of work, I, again, Angry Mouse, I can't, I, I'm trying my best to quote all of this, but he's an extremely de talented developer. We talked about this on the Light Client post. If you go to skyinclude.com slash Light Client, you'll see his tweets. You also see about 51% attacks. It's basically the people that have the miners. The miners are the ones that validate, the, well, not validate, but mine the blocks of the transactions to put your instructions into the next block in a blockchain that you are contributing to or participating in or customer of or user of. Okay, so it's basically energy, it's nature, it's, uh, it's anybody in the world that is able to afford and get machines to process blocks or mine for blocks can do it. And I know, again, my tinfoil hat is, you know, I, I don't know. I just feel like that's a better way than, 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 than having validators that, that have to kind of be um, approved by or apply for or get allowed by the U.S. government to process blocks or can censor blocks or not put transactions in certain blocks, right? That's what it's meaning. Um, so what does this mean with Web3 domains? Why am I talking about this on Sky Include? Um, you know, Handshake, I'm not just trying to be Handshake, I'm talking about both different naming protocols. And uh, I have my biases, of course, but there's we learned this with AmeriCoin. There's DNS and there's TLDs, right? And they're different. And, uh, you know, you can't just, you know, there's just different discussions. But what I'm saying here is if there's censorship in Ethereum that, you know, I know um, they're, they're just uh, going to close their eyes to this or just avoid this or talk about something else. This is what I believe with uh, Ethereum people. Um, and I have Ethereum. Uh, I have ETH domains. Um, I have some others. But it does make me worry and it's something to think about. So some more questions. Are ETH ENS domains really decentralized? Again, I'm maybe selectively picking what I like, but this is of course this is a name ancient as guy, John at dot sats. Um are they decentralized? Of course, there's fifty eight votes in a handshake you know, um Oh here's I should quote this, Nick uh, Angry Mouse. You have to have 51% attack uh, hash rate for every block, and uh, other people can step in, and they don't have to be OFAC compliant. I'm going to add this as well in my articles. I'm trying my best to be um, complete. Okay. Okay. Let's look at some other tweets. So there's some discussions. I know Decentral Web's been in the radar lately, um, and then just. They're saying it, it is decentralized, um, the DAO, but the DAO, especially if it's on Ethereum, is is basically anything under Ethereum now is 51% validated by U.S. regulated validators. So, And it's also about just purely money, and uh, having lots of money allows you to basically vote the way you want to vote. Um, maybe that's life, right? You might say that's life. Um and then our buddy Brantley.eth. Hey, man, I invite you to HandyCon 2023, our third annual. Handshake sticking around. Uh, I know you're really trying to, 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 to pick on it, um, even though Handshake wants to collaborate with ENS and uh, contribute to it and has made contributions to ETH uh, ENS domain systems for various community members. But Steve Mackey says back, you'll figure it out, learn proof of work, Nakamoto consensus, DNS architecture, and more. Um, it's true. He just apparently just pops up on Twitter and, and, and tries to take down the. But actually, we got a lot of people from, came into our Telegram group. I saw from this tweet that want to contribute to Handshake, so um, we welcome you. All right, and we know it's not the strongest Bitcoin, uh, the strongest Bitcoin, and it's not the most de decentralized, but it wants to be, and I am sticking to it. So it's still small, right? It's still small, and Brantley, you know, likes to point that out. Um, and, uh, just like early days in Bitcoin, it'll take longer to develop it stronger. And it's a bear market right now. And I ranked this in October, 2022, but my kids are in the other, in the backyard right now here in Thailand. And I, I want to have a world for my children that is not 
how do I say? You know, I, I almost wanted to get choked up, but I, it's not, it's, I know you're going to not believe me and you're going to think I'm going to pump my own bags, all right? But, you know, like Mike Carson says, he changed to another system that if there was a better system. But I still believe, actually, I wasn't really happy about proof of work originally, you know, like Johnny Wu says he's environmentally conscious and doesn't like it and others. It, but I still feel like it's better than proof of stake for things that you want security on. And, uh, you know, I sound like a hypocrite maybe because the hash rate and the security of handshakes not there yet but it can as people start to see this is more important they will contribute to it they will mine they will buy the coin they will support the network so i'm rambling and maybe i'm uh i'm a dreamer i am a dreamer i'm not normal i'm not living in my hometown and where i was born in america yeah i have a, a blog about cross-border trade with asia and the world and i sell online and i do online business and i i haven't been to the u.s since just February 2018, and I don't plan to go back, even though my grand, my uh, uh, uncle passed away last week. You know, I uh, I believe in uh, in a global world that treats people from anywhere in the world equally, and uh, I have friends in Iran that can't get bank accounts. I, am I a terrorist? They use crypto. <laughs> you understand? Like I don't think it's a it's a horrible thing that people that are born that have uh, heartbeats and, and brains have to be um, told what they can and cannot do because they're born in a certain country. This is like my value <laughs> and, and as a person, but it's a, my daughter's here. I'm going to go, but uh, I hope she grows up in a world that can be tr more decentralized than I am. Not, I'm not afraid to get deleted by Mark Zuckerberg's Facebook and, uh, you know, Google and uh, Jeff Bezos' Amazon. Okay, see you later. I'm going to go out. Bye-bye. Maggie, say hi.